FAQ number 106. We have a question here. Should Christians form communities? No. <laughs> uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added th unto them about 3,000 souls. Remember that. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear come upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. That's where the word community comes from. Uh, communism also. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Why did I make a point about the 3,000? Well, because one of the big arguments used by those proponents of church buildings, babble buildings we like to call them, because that's what they do there. They babble, they blah, 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 blah. It's a big uh, um, social gathering is what the place is. One of their big arguments is, well, if you have thousands of people, what are they going to meet in your living room or something? You know, they'll use that as an argument. But yet, what happens when you come together and you form that, that congregation, it becomes a community. Ironically, the NIV, the newest one, uh, takes out the word congregation many times in the King James Bible, and they insert the word community. And the word community does not appear in the King James Bible, by the way. It's not a Bible word. It's a New Age word. But... This thing of all things being common, coming together, let's buy a wilderness land someplace and let's all move there and we'll have all things common. We'll walk around in white robes or something like this. No, it always leads to problems. Okay, And building a big church building is the same thing. It is a religious community. You come there and it's, uh, it's good to be in the house of God. Amen, amen, amen. And you, and you get all the little community you know, potluck dinners and all this other stuff and the little... Uh, community fellowship types of things and stuff. It's ironic too because if you read uh, some of the Catholic literature out there, another word for community service is Eucharistic services. Interesting. But, uh, you know, this, this whole thing of Christians coming together and you kind of have this special little place that you are all there and you can get along and everything else as long as you're, you know, abiding by the rules of the clique, you know, it just it leads to problems. And ironically, in the book of Acts, it also led to problems. Uh, there were many issues because they were all coming together and selling everything and stuff. In the early, early part of the book of Acts, they are expecting, you know, there's still this, they're in this time period, it's a transition book where the nation of Israel is given another chance. That's why the signs and wonders are there. They're given another chance to accept Jesus as their Messiah. So everything's kind of up in the air, kind of like, we don't really know what's going to happen. What's you know, and so people are just like, well, Jesus could come back here. There could be the second coming soon. So I'm just going to sell everything I have and I'm going to go live with all these other Christians. And that sounds like a noble thing to do, but it's not what God intends. Uh, you go by the time you hit with Paul in First Timothy chapter five, he's telling you that you're to provide for your own, and if you if there are widows, you're to take them into your house. Let not the church be charged. Separation, you see. And the groups of Christians, towards the later part of the book of Acts, they're smaller groups meeting in homes. And these huge numbers and things that are all coming together and having things all in common, that's split up now. So again, kind of makes a hard time for you if you're trying to justify your church building. Real hard time. It's essentially a community. So, uh, you know, and you say, but we're right here at the end and, and there's going to be an economic collapse soon and whatever else. Uh, you know, that stuff is very, very hard to, to see it and to, and to keep your mind focused on what you're supposed to do as a Christian because you start to get this fight or flight you know, thing where you're just going, okay, we are like right on the brink of major war, and we are. Um, we are right on the brink of an economic collapse, and we are. We're right on the brink of, of you know, natural disasters happening all the time. I mean, your home could be totally wiped out, whatever else, and that's true. Uh, but can't get can't God get you through it? You see? No, I got to build a survivalist retreat. I got to build a, a a bunker and stock up food for seven years and things like this. You know, 
My theory on this whole end times thing, to be very honest with you, is I believe that if enough Christians, if enough Bible-believing Christians stand up and say, we're not going to you know, back down on our stands, we're not going to submit to this politically correct world, we're going to preach the gospel harder than we've ever preached, I believe the Lord can preserve things until the catching away of the bride of Christ. I believe He can keep the doors open. Paul writes about that. You know, great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries right now, brethren. That's all the more reason to fight as Christians. That's all the more reason that we can show the world, hey, the Bible's true. Why? Look at how wicked the world is right now out there. And look what the Bible has to offer. You see? The darker it gets out there in the world, the better chances we have to witness. The worse it gets out there for the lost world, the better it gets for us as Christians. Why not continue to fight as Christians instead of worrying about surviving and, and let's all come, let's bring Christian communities together and have a survival retreat and stuff. Uh, instead of doing that, why don't we stay separated in our different towns and localities and things like this and say, you know, our fellowship, our time of fellowship is going to be when we're called up together with the Lord to meet each other, you know, there in the clouds and things. That's going to be the party that we can have. Let's not throw a, a party of all the YouTube subscribers to this ministry and other ministries and let's have a big get together and stuff like that. Let's all come together and then while we're there, we're going to decide that we're going to buy 12,000 acres someplace and all have little homes that we live in and walk around with robes on or something. Uh, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, God wants us separate. He wants us witnessing in the locality where He has you. That's what He wants. We are to shine as lights in a very dark world. Little lights all over the globe. Like that. All over the place. Little lights. Not just one big bright, you know, holy city someplace that meets in some big giant temple somewhere. It's not what the Lord wants. One other point I need to make here because my wife sitting over here just reminded me. Couldn't tell me while I was doing the video, you know. Uh, but... Uh, if we all have Christian communities, if, if, you know, let's form a community up here in Ayers Duke County, Maine, where I live. There's a lot of cheap land. We can buy a lot of land, and we're going to have all the, all the subscribers, the faithful subscribers of Husky 394 XP are going to move to northern Maine, and we're going to have a community up here, and we're all going to get together and stuff like this. Uh, who's going to be there to witness in your town? And what do you think we're going to start to do uh, all join together? I really hate to tell you, but we're not that much in agreement. We're going to start to fight. We're going to start to butt heads. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the Lord wants us separate. The Lord says, okay, brother so-and-so, you're down there. Sister, you're over there. Okay, couple over there, you're over there. Young man, you're over there. Young woman, you're over there. You know, that's what the Lord wants. Keep us apart so we don't kill each other. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is. Uh, and, you know, even if we could all get along, what are we going to do? We're just going to be this little commune that, that just, like, we just love to be around each other. We're never going to go out and witness. Like the Amleks. Yeah. Like, like the Amish, you know. Amleks. We call them Amlek. Catholic, Amish, you know, Amlek. You know, we just, we just all kind of fellowship together, and we just all live together, and we don't talk to other people and whatever else. That's not what God wants, brethren. It's not what He wants. I know it's rough sometimes. I'd sure like to spend some time with a lot of you. I'd like to sit around and just talk about the Bible for hours and hours and hours and just have fellowship. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I've gotten to meet brethren up here and stuff. It's a wonderful thing. Just sit down and just talk about the Bible. It's a breath of fresh air. This sick, disgusting world and you actually see another light in, the, in this dark world and you're just like, oh, another Christian. Oh, another Bible believer. I don't have to worry about being around this person. It's a wonderful thing. But uh, our fellowship is going to be in heaven, not down here in a community someplace.